I wanted to show you guys how group policy works and a few other things. But before I do, I just want to point one other thing out. If you ever see this icon telling you that it's not getting internet or internet's limited, actually go check because that's always a, a liar. If you've been working with Windows Server, you guys all know that. But, um, or Windows in general, really. So anyway, let's take a look at group policy. Now that we've got our domain installed, we're going to check out one of the big things to do with Active Directory, which is group policy management. So group policy um, is what we uh, is what we use to push out different settings, scripts, drive maps, uh, install software on computers, remove software on computers, change registry settings, uh, set task schedules that might reboot the computer at a certain time or run a script. Um, and you can get really granular with these. And I prefer them over scripts. A lot of guys still use scripts. And um, I like you know using group policy for everything. And if I have to use a script, I'll group policy it. Um, so if you ever heard the term GPO or group policy object, um, that stands for a group, like I said, it stands for group policy object. And what that really means is it's, it's a way that we're able to group computers together uh, based on our OU structure, as you can see here, and push out different things to the computers and users. And it's a very powerful way of doing this with a GUI. Um, it's much better than scripting in Linux, just, just to be honest, it is. And the main reason it is is because you can use a GUI and train somebody on this much faster than with scripting. And and even if you did know scripting, this is faster to set up because you can make this deploy through millions of computers theoretically, you know, all with a GUI. And you won't have to manually adjust your script all the time for all the different computer names or whatever have you. And in some cases, if your domain isn't changing all the time, you're not going to have to update it all the time for different computer names and stuff like that. But you will still have to maintain it. And that's so much easier done with Active Directory because Active Directory, if you joined your computer to the domain, is automatically going to take care of that for you. Um, so it's a much better way than just scripting things. And this is why I love, li uh, I love Windows over Linux because um, I used to be all about that. So let's take a look at group policy. Um, if we want to make a new um, OU, um, or sorry, a new G GPO, we want to consider two things. We're either going to control it with security filtering, which is the way I like to do things because it's more granular, or you're going to link it to the actual OU. So if you just wanted it to apply to the HR users, you could create a GPO and link it in this, in this domain here. So we're going to call this GPO because I'm just creating these two GPOs I'm about to show you. I'm going to create two of them, and I'm just going to create them so that I can show you the two different ways. So I'm going to name them after the ways of doing things. So there's one way where you can do it with linking, or you can do it with security filtering. So I'm going to say link to OU. Okay. And now we've got this blank group policy. It doesn't do anything by default. And we can go in here and edit it. Once we get into the edit, we'll actually make it do stuff. But we can link it to an OU, and by default, it's going to have authenticated users, which is a bit of a bit of a misnomer um, <laughs> because it doesn't actually mean authenticated users. It means anything on the domain, authenticated users and computers. So, but it's only going to apply to anything on the domain if it's linked at HR users. Now I'm going to show you the other way to do things, because in that way we're just linking it straight to where it belongs, and we're going to leave the default of authenticated users so it applies to anything in that OU. Now that's not as granular as the way I like to do it. The way I like to do it is I like to link it right up at the top, and we're going to say this, we're going to call this security filtering. And it's called security filtering because you use security groups, or security principles would be a better way to put it. So we're going to call that security filtering. Hopefully my spelling is right. And what I'm going to do with this one, I don't want to see this all the time. It basically just says, you have selected a link to a group policy object, except for changes to the link properties. Changes to changes you make here are global to the GPO and will impact all other locations where the GPO is linked. So I don't care to see that. Um, so basically, we have it set up for the entire domain authenticated users. Now what I like to do is, like I said, this means it's going to be for everything in the domain, 
not in the forest, just in the domain. But it's going to also be for all the users. So I like to go like this. I like to go, well, let's, let's change that to a security group. But we don't have any security groups made yet. Well, we do, but we don't have any that are... We don't have any that are custom. We only have built-in ones. So we're gonna link, we're gonna pin this down here because we use this a lot, and we're gonna go into our OU for security groups, which is in our master one, and we're gonna go new. And there's two different kinds of grouping groups you can do. There's, um, well, counting group scope. There's way more, but with group type, there's security and distribution. Distribution's great for email. If you wanna make a distribution group. Um, you can send out an email to the all staff and it'll go to everybody in that group. But that's not for this lesson. We're going to create a security group for this security principle. And we're going to call it security filtering test. So we're just calling it security filter because, like, again, I'm just showing you guys the way that I like to do uh, group policy. So then we're going to add to the security filtering. We're going to come back over here to group policy management. We're going to come back here. And we're actually going to we're actually going to come in here and add the security principle we just created, so that it's only going to apply to members of this group. And the reason I like to do it this way is twofold. Like I said, it's more granular, and you can see right when you come into group policy all the different OUs if you just link them at the top. You can also see that view from down here, all the different OUs that are in the domain. But as you can see, this one that was linked to OU you don't see because it's you know, you don't see it when you first come into the group policy. And you might not care about that, but for me, I think it's just simpler and more granular to do it this way. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add to the security filtering group that group I made. So we're just going to go sec and see if it'll find it. So it found security filter right away. So now it's saying that anybody who's a member of that group is going to have whatever I set in the group policy will be applied to it. Now we're going to get into actually making a group policy in a minute. But I just want you guys to learn about how to apply them because this is very important. This is this is the beginning. We're doing baby steps here. So not that you guys are babies or anything silly like that. Um, but now what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the security group and we're going to add our members to this group. And this is a much better way. You don't ever want to give, when you give somebody access to a file or a folder or you give somebody access to something, you don't want to do it by their username because it's just messy. You want to do it by adding them to groups. So you come into here, and you want to make sure that you go into member of and members. So members is going to be allow you to add users. And then you're going to go, OK, apply. And now that person is now a member of that group. And you can also do nesting with groups. So you can add other groups to other groups. And so you could just add somebody to one group, but that group's actually a member of like 10 other groups. But we're going to leave that for now. So now. I'm a member of that group. So if I go and edit this policy now, it's only going to apply to anybody who's a member of this group. So what we just did there was we created um, a group policy, we attached it to a security group, and then we added myself to that security group. Um, so that's a much better way of doing it. We can do the same thing with computers and any basically anything. Um, so that's the way I'm going to do it. Now, if we wanted to actually go do something with this, we'd come into here and we'd go edit. And we'd actually create the group policy. Now, I could go on and on about group policy. So I don't want to show you guys too much. But in here, there's preferences and there's policies. And you can deploy them by the user or you can deploy them by the computer. And depending on you know what you're doing, you might want to you might have to do it with a user, you might have to do it with a computer, because obviously certain settings for a computer wouldn't make sense for a user. A logon script wouldn't make sense for a computer, but a startup script would, and vice versa. A startup script wouldn't make sense for you know a user, but a logon script would. So you'd find those in different spots. Um, in fact, maybe we could see that right here. So you want to get familiar with group policy really well too, because on your exams it will have uh, questions about where all the different um, group policies are. It'll actually ask you about this. So having an idea of where they're all kept is important. Um, so I'm not going to go digging through here, but as you can see, there's tons and tons of different settings that you guys can actually do. Uh, administrative templates, you can get down and mess around with like Windows updates or all sorts of different things. 
And I like preferences more than policies if you can use them because they're, again, more granular. Um, but I'll get into more of that later. But that's basically the different things in group policy. So make sure you understand that, first of all. The difference between doing GPOs differently. Um, if you come down into here, you can see all the, the different ones. We have this one that's linked to an actual OU that we want it to apply to, and then anybody in that OU. Um, or you can do it the other way, which is anybody in the domain linked to anybody in the domain, and security filtered out for anybody who belongs to the security filtering group, and then just add people to that group as you need them. So this is a kind of a hard concept, I think, for a lot of people to grasp at first. Um, so if you have any questions, again, let me know. Uh, but I wanted to show you a little bit more about group policy. As you can see, it will follow your domain structure. Um, but that won't matter if you do it the way I'm showing you guys. But it will have all the different stuff in here. Um, it'll have the domain controllers, default OU, and I'll show you guys later um, commands that are really useful for you guys' exams. But that's one thing I wanted to show you. Um, another thing is when you come into here and you're looking at your different OUs is the details pane. So there's scope, details, settings, delegation, and status. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a break and when I come back, I'll show you what those all mean. Okay, guys. So here we're going to take a look at the scope tab, which we've already kind of seen. So you've got your scope, location, security filtering. WMI filtering is one thing we didn't go over. WMI filtering gives you more granular ability to apply to certain WMI filters, such as laptops, desktops, but you have to create your own filters. Um, you can also... Uh, do different things, but a lot of this has been deprecated that you do with WMI filtering, and this should be confused with security filtering, they are different. But a lot of this has been, like I said, deprecated for other technologies such as um, item, item level targeting, uh, which we'll get into later. So we go on to the details tab, and we get just basic information, domain, owner, created, modified, user version, computer version, unique ID, and GPO status. This is what I want to focus on here. GPO status gives you the ability to disable certain settings. So if you're only making a GPO that only applies to computers, it's a good idea to go and disable this. Both because when you go and you look at the, um, when you go and look at some of the other tabs, I'll show you later, it'll make it more clear. But also because I've been, I've always been told by the senior admins that if you do that, it makes your GPOs faster if you disable the computer settings because it doesn't have to go through them to apply the GPO. So again, if you disable the user settings because you're only using computer, or you disable the computer because you're only using user, it's very advantageous because, or very, it's very, it, it's a good idea because um, it won't have to apply to as many things. So make sure you do that properly. Um, but you don't want to do that for the default domain policy. In fact, you never want to touch any of the default domain policies. So we're just going to unclick them because I don't want to do that. Now, Enhanced Security can, uh, Internet Explorer, because it's a, a way in for viruses, is very locked down in servers. So you, you, you'll get this message from time to time. And I can show you how to disable that in a future video. Uh, we're going to click Close. So there's no settings defined, but in here we can see all the different things that have been defined for it, for both the computer settings and the user settings. So if you come back up in here, you can actually see what all these, what the default policies do. So if you're ever wondering and you don't want to dig through the policy in the group policy editor, you can see in the group policy management interface exactly what they do. Uh, also, we have delegation. So if you want to make the policy not apply to somebody based on the security principle or group they belong to, you can do that as well. And also the status. So you finally get a one that comes in and says, um, basically a little bit of information about it, and that's about it. Um, I'll let you guys kind of have a look at this, but that pretty much wraps it up for what I wanted to show you for my first video on group policy. The next video, we're going to go much more into group policy and show you guys how it works and everything else. There'll probably be a lot of videos on group policy, so please stay tuned, and thank you very much for watching. Please like this video if you guys liked it. Please dislike it if you disliked it. Please rate and subscribe. You can follow me at on Twitter at JakeTheITPro. You can also follow us on Facebook. We have a page called System In Syndicate, and that is the best place to keep up to date with our videos because I post them there first. All right, guys, thank you very much. Have a great day.